Hi everyone, welcome to part eight of the Lord of Lights Masterclass. So we're gonna keep going now and we're getting onto some of the smaller parts of the model. So hopefully we'll go a little bit quicker. So uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna paint all of the straps on the model. So there's some leather straps. So I'm just gonna thin down some black paint and we're gonna black out all of the, the straps just with some thin paint. <clears throat> I've done a few already, you can see. So just go over the straps. There's some on the back there. And then there's, uh, some small straps just here on the back of the shield. Just paint those out. It doesn't have to be a solid black, it's just to give us a base coat for the browns that we're gonna do afterwards. So I'll do those ones. We'll also do the dagger straps as well. <clears throat> and then the straps on the back of the, the wrist here. We'll do those too. So I'll just get those uh, blocked in with black and then we'll come back. Okay, so all those straps are ready to be painted in now. So I'm just gonna, we're gonna keep them quite dark, I think. Um, and we're gonna just base coat them all with uh, dryad bark. So just do a couple of coats, dryad bark over all of the straps, leaving the black that we just put on, uh, just around the edges to black line it. If you do that on all of those, so all the ones we've just done. Also, I think we'll paint this pouch the same color as well. We do it like a cool brown, quite dark, it'll contrast with that red loincloth there. So we do that, so if you're painting all of those straps and then we'll come back once that's done. Okay, so I've got all those straps base coated and I'll just show you which ones I've done. So we've got the one across the chest there, these ones here that are holding the shield on. Uh, there's one on the back of the head here, which is holding the mask on, so I nearly missed that. And there's just a small amount of strap here and here from the front. We did the pouch as well and there was two pieces of strapping just on the back of the shield if i show you and then there was the uh the handle straps and then there's a small strap here as well and then on the back of the wrist on the hammer arm as well there's just two straps there so just a base coat there so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to thin down some black paint and you can use norn oil if you want to i've just got some black paint here so i'm just going to thin that down some water to so sort of wash consistency then I'm just going to do one quick wash over all of those areas that we've, we've just base coated, just to add a shade <clears throat> into any of those recesses before we do some highlights. So I'll go over all of those, just allow the wash to run into the recesses, and when it's dry it'll be a quick shade for you. So I'll do that over all the straps and then we'll come back. Okay, so that's the, uh, the black wash done there over the uh, dryad bark base coat. So I'm gonna mix in Steel Legion Drab in with the dryad bark. So it's probably about 70% dryad bark, 30% Steel Legion Drab. <clears throat> Add a bit of water to it, and then we're gonna do uh, chunky highlights on, the, uh, on all the straps. So pretty much covering a large area of the strap there. Just keep your paint thin. We're gonna leave our shading towards those edges there. Draw in your brush towards the middle, like so. And as that's drying, can move on to another part. So we'll do these straps as well. There won't be much to do. Maybe do small areas. And do the same with those back straps and then the same with the pouch. So leaving the bottom of the pouch and those shaded areas that we've just done. Keeping your paint thin, just drawing it up. Put your highlights on. So don't do that on the bottom, because that will be in shadow. Let it dry and go over it again if you want to. So we'll do that with all of those straps, I'll show you how that looks. Okay, so that highlight's done now. It's quite a sort of highlight. You can't really see a massive difference. Maybe on the pouch you can see a little bit more. But yeah, I've done that over everything, like on those straps. It's just starting to add a bit of colour, but still keeping it quite dark. So I'm going to do the same thing again, but with uh, just Steel Legion Drab, thin down with water. So at this stage, we're not edge highlighting, we're just sort of building up the transitions, sort of blending a little bit. So just drawing that brush in towards the middle again, using the Steel Legion Drab. So we'll do edge highlighting a bit later when it's just needed. Just in here.
So the straps are quite small, so you won't need a lot. And then the same again with the pouch, like we did earlier. Just focusing towards the top. Keeping your paint thin. And even the bottom of the pouch with those previous layers and shades that we've already done. So you can let that dry and then go over it again if you want to. And I'll do this on all of the straps <clears throat> and I'll show you how that looks. Okay, so that's the Steel Legion Drab highlight done there. You can see it's just started to pick out those uh, highlights a little bit more. You can see we've got the uh, okay, on the back of the straps a little bit. And the dagger as well. See there, it's just at the top. So the next stage, we're going to just uh, thin down some Zandri dust. We're going to do two things with this. So first thing we're going to do is pretty much what we've just done which is like a thin glaze highlight towards the top areas. Like so. And that's the same on everything, so like on this pouch as well, so it's glazing up the transitions with a thin paint. Then once we've done that, we'll take the paint again. Um, Keeping it thin still. But we're going to do like an edge highlight as well. So once that's done, just run your brush around the edges of the straps to pick out the edges. And I'll do that on all of the straps, go around all of them. So um, we'll get that done and come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so the Zandri just highlights done now. You can see we just edge highlighted and just built up the uh, highlights a little bit more on there. Do the same on, on the straps there, you can see. And then on the dagger as well. I think also at this point, sometimes it's nice, um, because these are like leather, you can get a bit of texture in this as well, but we don't want to repeat the same textures we've done already. So with leather strapping and things like that, sometimes they have like cracks in them. So if you just, you can just oh, get in front of the camera. Just have like the odd little line. There's Andrew dust. So if every now and then, it just hints that it's not a completely smooth sort of surface, and then it's cracked here and there. You do that at the top and the bottom. And it just breaks up the, you know, the smoothness of it. Just gives it a slight bit of texture. We do the same on this pouch as well, rather than doing like the cross hatching we did before. So we just have the odd little little spot here and there, just to give it a bit of texture, just to stop it from looking so smooth. You can just add that here and there, <clears throat> and I'll do that on the other straps as well, just to add a little line here and there, just to break it up. But it works quite well. And we'll go over those with the next highlight in a minute. Okay, guys, the straps are nearly done now. You can see that we've just added that little bit of texture here and there on those straps, just to break it up slightly. So it doesn't just a like flat paint. <clears throat> uh, so we're gonna, they're nearly done. So we can do the last highlight now. This is probably just an edge highlight of Ushabti Bone. So just leaving our previous highlights showing, so concentrating on the more on those raised areas. So just in the central part here. Very fine. That lightest highlight. A little small one on the bottom. So you get the idea. So I'm going to go around all of those straps and just add a final highlight on them. And uh, I might pick out the odd little scratch that we've done as well just to make it feel a bit different we'll come back when they're finished and i'll show you how that looks okay so straps are done now so i'll just show you through those so we've got the one on the chest so the ones there that hold the shield on we've got the pouch there that's done as well one on the back of the head and then we've got the ones on the hammer just added those little nicks and lines there just to give it a bit of texture as usual, there'll be photos on Instagram for you to uh, use as reference. So 
there on the back out. So we've got a couple of bits which we can do real quick. So using lead belcher, so I'm going to just have a bit of that. And we're going to paint, there's this little icon here, this little fly icon. So we're going to paint that in lead belcher, the whole thing. And also at the same time, whilst we've got lead belcher, we're going to paint all of these spikes on the shield in lead belcher. So I'll do that if you guys do that and then we'll come back and we'll carry on. Okay, so I've base coated those areas in lead belcher now. So you just picked out those spikes. So if you just quickly put a coat of Norn oil over them, so over the icon and the spikes. So let it run into the recesses. And then do that over the spikes as well. <clears throat> So allow it just to pull around the edge of the spikes as well. And then once that's dry, we'll do the same thing but with uh, Agrax Earthshade. So I'll do both of those and come back once that's done. Okay, so the Noin Oil Wash and the Agrax Earthshade Wash is dry on those uh, spikes and the metal icon now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get a little bit of Somho Silver. And we're just going to add a very fine highlight just sort of like on the top areas of those. Use the flap of your brush. Just draw it towards the end of the spikes. And we'll just pick those out nicely. So do that on all of those and just add like a fine highlight on this icon here. Just don't need many, just the odd little dots to pick out those edges. So I'll do that on these and then we'll go on to the next part. I've uh, noticed here on the back of this miniature we've got a bit of a bit of spine showing there, so we, uh, we'll use the Zandri dust and we'll base coat the spine in that. And then we'll let that dry after a couple of coats. And then I'll do a highlight of Ushabti Bone next. So I'll come back after that Ushabti Bone highlight. Okay, so I've done the Ushabti Bone on that spine area now, so I'm just going to do one highlight, quite fine, of Screaming Skull. And then once I've done that, I'll do like a dot highlight of white where it's needed. So this is Screaming Skull. I'll highlight these areas, leaving our previous highlights showing in the areas where it's needed. And then once I've done this, I'll just have like a dot white highlight so I'll come back once that's finished. Okay so that's done now so we're going to go on to the next part. Um, so we've we've not had these uh, maggots painted yet they've been sitting there for quite a while. I've just had to uh, google image search um, pictures of maggots and I feel a little bit queasy now but it's helped me because the reference has shown me that maggots can be different colours depending on what type of maggots they are so I thought rather than just doing like a big blob of like fleshy creamy coloured maggots we can mix it up a little bit so we'll leave some in this sort of um, pinky purpley colour and I'm just going to pick out a few in this colour. Uh, so this is Talon Sand. So paint out some maggots in this colour. So this is like a yellowy cream colour. So we're leaving that sort of purple shade in between the maggots because that can act as a natural shade for us. So I'm going to go and pick out some of those. So there's the maggots on his belly and um, we've got one here on the shoulder pad. There's one sitting here as well. And then there's uh, also a couple on the gallows which we missed out last time. So there's one there at the top and then there's one hiding inside that cut there on the neck. So I'm going to paint all of those in. Um, well, paint the ones that I want in Talan Sand and then come back and show you how that looks. Okay, so I've picked out a few of those now. Just leaving a few of the other ones in that sort of pinky colour. So we'll carry on with the, so these, I've done both of these in the sort of uh, sand colour as well, Talon Sand. So I'm going to highlight the ones that I've done in Talon Sand with Screaming Skull. So what we're going to do is just follow the lines that are sculpted, leaving the Talon Sand sort of showing. So I'm going to go over all of these ones. And come back in there once I've done this. I'll take a little bit of time. 
Okay, so those cream colored maggots are highlighted there with the first stage. So we're going to do another uh, last highlight on them with pallid witch flesh. So just thin that down. And we're just going to sort of add that highlight towards the top of each of the maggot. So don't cover up everything, just a little bit at the top there. Got to be quite fine with it. Just to make them a little bit paler. Like so. So I'm going to go over all of these ones. Then we'll come back and we'll paint the pinky coloured ones. <clears throat> so that's those all highlighted now. So the ones that are left over, the sort of pinky coloured ones. So I'm just going to quickly base coat each one of those in pink horror. So leaving that shade that we already had in all of the recesses around and between the maggots. Just being careful not to go over your other maggots that you painted. So I'm going to go over all of those before we highlight. Okay, so that's the pinky coloured maggots base coated with pink horror. So just to keep the consistency, I'm going to highlight these with a mix of pallid witch flesh and pink horror. So it's about 50-50 on the palette. So we're highlighting with the same colour as the other maggots so they don't sort of jar too much with each other. And then we're just going to go as we did before out those lines in the maggots of this mix leaving the pink horror showing in the recesses it's going to take a bit of time you have to be super careful i'm going to go over all of those ones and then come back once that's done okay so that's the pink maggots there highlighted up with the first stage so we're just going to do a final highlight of pallid witch flesh so it's the same highlight we did of the cream coloured maggots so you should pull them all together so they don't look too separate so just at the tops of the maggots just a little fine highlight just following those lines as we did before so i'll go over those and then come back okay so that's all of those maggots highlighted up now you can see the they're not jumping out too much. We didn't want to draw too much attention to them because obviously we want to keep the focus. We're going to try and keep the focus up on the head. <clears throat> but before we do uh, the next stage, which would probably be the horns, uh, I'm going to paint in his teeth. Like We've not done those yet. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to base coat them Zandri dust and then I'm going to do a highlight of Screaming Skull. So using a very, very small amount of paint. I'm just going in and just picking out those teeth. They're tiny as well, so you're going to have to be very, very careful. If you make a mistake, don't worry too much. You can always go back in and neaten up. So I'm just using the flat of the brush just to pick them out. It might be easier. So I'm going to do the sandry dust and then screaming skull. Pick those teeth out. Okay, so I've painted his teeth in there. They're quite small. We just picked them out. Uh, so we're going to paint the horns next. Uh, like I mentioned in the planning video, we're going to paint them so they're darker on the ends here and then lighter towards the centre to pull attention towards the centre of the, the head. Because uh, if they're lighter at the tips, the eye will be drawn away. So I'm going to use a Rhinox hide. I'm going to base coat pretty much all of the horns in Rhinox hide. So if you go ahead and do that, maybe like two thin coats, um, add a bit of water, go over the whole of the horn. Do that on both of them. Okay, so that's the Rhinox hide base coat done there on the horns. So now we're going to take some Doomball Brown and then we're just going to basically just leave the Rhinox hide on the ends of the horns and just paint the Doomball Brown all the way to the centre of the horns. So from the end, the dark area on the end. Just keeping it thin, drawing your brush in towards the centre. So this is a broken horn on this side, so most of this is going to be this doomball colour. So I'll do a couple of coats on this and we'll carry it. Okay, so that's the Doom Ball stage done now. So now we're going to move on to Scrag Brown and we're going to start uh, working towards the centre of the horns now 
but actually painting some lines in to the horns to add that texture that you see quite often on horns. So you'll see that the, the lines you'll see most of them towards the bottom where it's darkest. So the center of the horn will still be mostly brown. So we'll just paint that in and then just pull the lines down so that they fall into the area where we painted the tomb ball brown, like so. I'm going to go over these horns and paint those lines in and show you how it looks. Okay, so that's the scrag brown stage done. So I'm going to carry on and use Balor brown. So this is a quite a yellowy brown and it's quite a jumping sort of highlight stage as well. So using the tip of your brush Paint those lines in again, going inside the ones you've already done. Concentrating on making it lighter towards the center. Just keep going over. We'll paint those lines in the horns. like so. so I'm going to go over the horns and add those lines in with Balor Brown now. Okay so that's the Balor Brown stage done. You can see that we've started adding those line texture into the horns. So we'll repeat the process now with your Shabti Bone. So keeping that thin, working towards the centre. So we've got lighter end of the horns towards the middle. Just going inside those lines that we already painted. Being careful, all the way down. So focus on towards the middle of the uh, the, the center of the horns now, and keep going and show you what that looks like. So we're going to leave these areas dark down the bottom. Okay, so that's the screaming skull stage done now. You can really see that the, the horns are getting lighter towards the centre and it's drawing the attention to the face a lot more than if it was the other way around. So uh, we're going to go in with some white now, right in the centre. Just going over those, those lines again with the white. So we'll do that over all of those ones just towards the centre. We'll come back once that's done. Okay, so we've got the horns lightened up now towards the centre. So you can really see it's pulling the focus into the centre of the head rather than away from the head. So I've just mixed a little bit of black in with Rhinox Hide and I've just thinned that down to make it into a wash consistency. And I'm just going to paint that on the very tips, just glaze it down on the very tips of the horns. And what I'll do is there's some cracks in, on this side. So I'll just paint it to there as well to pick out those where the horn's broken. Just like so. And then we'll carry on. What we'll do is we'll just get a little bit of that. Um, we'll use some screaming skull. Thin it down. So these horns uh, can be quite shiny. So we'll give it a little bit of a bit of an effect. So just on the edge here. Pull some screaming skull down. Just give it a little bit of a sort of impression of a shine there on that piece and then just picking out the end of the horns a little bit of screaming skull as well and I'll do the same on the other side and we'll come back and show you how that looks okay so that's the horns pretty much highlighted and shaded there you can see we've got that sort of textured effect going on uh, they're a little bit scratchy in places, so we'll do the old Lamia Medium trick. So we just paint one coat of Lamia Medium over all of the horns. Just to smooth out all those colours together. 
give it the same finish. And then we'll call those horns done. Okay, so the horns are done. So um, the lamium mediums are still drying on those. But I think what we've got now is every area pretty much painted uh, on all the separate pieces. So what I want to do next is assemble the model. <clears throat> uh, so we're gonna in the next episode we're gonna take all of these pieces off the props, clean them, assemble the model, and then we're gonna balance the miniature. Then so like I, I said at the start. Uh, in the skin masterclass and the armor one, we'll probably go back to them later once we've assembled the model just to tweak some of the contrast and um, some of the colors and things like that. So I think the next episode is going to be assembling the model, balancing the model out, just doing final tweaks before we go on to basing him. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Cheers. Bye.